Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Welcome actually to the final episode of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice because in this video I am going to be beating Ishin and finishing the game. The reason I can say this with such confidence is because this video is post-commentated. You will probably remember I uploaded Sekiro last like, whew, like a week ago, it's been a while. And I had so much confidence that I was gonna breeze through Ishin. He actually turned out to be extremely difficult. Probably one of the hardest Souls bosses out there. I think... I don't know yet how he will square up in subsequent playthroughs, but I think he's up there with like Orphan of Cause type deals. Maybe even harder than Orphan of Cause. By far the hardest Souls boss. Uh, I mean final boss. So... Yeah, he was not easy. He was not easy. As you can see, over the many, many attempts, I kind of got good at killing Genichiro. Genichiro is kind of a bitch, but this dude, this dude is insane. Especially, well, the second phase. So, the third phase of the overall fight and the second Ishin phase. This kept happening to me where I tried to Mikiri and it just kept whiffing. It was kind of annoying. I could have gotten him a lot more easily if I hit those. Yeah, see the insane thing about this fight is that it lasts a long time. Again, four phases. So for a good eight to ten minutes, you essentially have to play perfectly. And you know, this game is not easy. Uh, nobody can say that this game is easy to play. And to do that for ten minutes, it's very, very difficult to do consistently. This dude Honestly, at points I was thinking of giving up and just saying fuck it, but I went back and I struggled through and I finally got him. It did feel very satisfying to beat this dude. Okay, this is the phase. By the end I could get to this phase semi-consistently, but this phase absolutely always kicked my ass. He deals unbelievable damage. Uh, literally unbelievable. Aside from that, he has a ton of different attack strings, they have different enders, they have different like uh, timings and all that. You can Mikiri him, but yeah, it doesn't help. Just look at the amount of damage. He almost took half my HP with one hit, so... Oh yeah, he also builds crazy stamina damage, so... This boss, again, this boss is insanely hard. Uh, I think... I don't know how much of a difference having more HP would make and all that if I'd fought some of the other optional bosses, but I don't know, man. I think it's hard regardless. However, I did find not an exploit. I wouldn't say this is an exploit. It's just a tactic. Ishin, just like any other boss in this game, as it turns out, is weak to something. You know, a lot of bosses have prosthetic tool weaknesses. Ishin has a skill weakness. He is particularly weak to the, uh, the Mortal Blade draw ability. As you saw, it actually deals quite a bit of damage to him. You see, just like... And that AoE is insane. It's a huge AoE. And you just look at how much stamina damage he builds up. It's kind of crazy. But the Mikiri Blade... Or not the Mikiri... The uh, Mortal Blade is probably the best, most consistent way to deal with him. It deals a lot of damage. You can keep using it even if you run out of Spirit Emblems. It actually... I think it affects the damage... Uh, but it doesn't affect the stamina buildup as far as I know. You can just keep going with it. And the idea is just to wait until he does a jumping attack and uh, hit him with the Mortal Blade. You can be even safer than I was by uh, waiting just for the jump attack. I blocked some of his other stuff, you know, and attacked him here and there and did a few Makiris when I could. But yeah, he jumps a lot, even though it deals a shit ton of damage. Uh, this was a little bit risky, I don't know what I was thinking here. Uh, yeah, he jumps a lot, so you will be able to counter him frequently. You just have to be very careful with the timing. I messed up my input there. You can dodge his, not dodge, but deflect his gunshots. It's just, again, really, the thing is, even that's risky to do, that Mikiri, because he sometimes ends that attack with a sweep. So, again, very risky, and this is... The final phase, uh, he does these lightning attacks now, it's kind of crazy. Again, deals a ton of damage, causes shock. I still don't think I have a firm grasp on how to exactly parry this lightning, but it worked most of the time 
uh, when I was fighting him, so... Hey, I'm happy about that. It's all that matters, but really, the idea is the same. He also has this projectile move, which doesn't have infinite range. Decided to use a pellet there. Believe me, you need every single heal you can get your hand on for this fight. Probably most of you guys have fought Ishin, so I'm not, you know, saying anything new here, but I cannot overstate how difficult this guy was. I used to think that before him probably German was the hardest Souls final boss. Not even, you know, the Moon Presence, because Moon Presence is a bitch, but German for sure. But this guy, this guy tops everything. Uh, here I managed to get the counter, but the attack missed him. It's not a projectile, you don't deflect it like the uh, the dragons, you don't like shoot it back at him, it's just like a big like sword, electric swing, which is pretty cool. Again, it does a lot of damage to him if you can get it, but you'll see I miss it once here and here, yeah. Oh no, I got it here. I for sure miss it at least once here, yeah. As you can see, that is, that is dangerous. That is very, very dangerous. You don't, you don't want to fuck with that. I played it safe. This is the farthest I ever got. Uh, I only made it to this third phase a couple of times, but I actually beat him. The third phase is not the worst. Uh, you can make it through. It's the second phase that's really the, really the bitch. If you can make it through that, you have a pretty solid uh, chance of actually beating him. Thought of going for more attacks, and I was like, fuck that, no, I'm not gonna risk it at this point. But as you can see, we're like, what, seven minutes in, and you literally cannot make a mistake. I've made a couple, but he just deals so much damage. I don't even know how people do this with, like, not getting hit and not using heals and level one and all that shit. It's insane. The Souls community is insane, and this boss is insane. I've seen the arguments online. People think that from has gone overboard with this guy i don't think so he's very difficult he does have a few unfair things which usually a lot of souls uh, final bosses don't have i was just like fuck it i'm using my heal i was very nervous here uh you cannot even begin to imagine how like fucking nervous i was you saw that i <laughs> pretty much missed all my uh counters and shit and here it was I got it, and Shinobi Execution, that's a cool attack move, he like deflects, or death move or whatever. He goes into the seppuku, or sodoku stance as they say, and you have to sodoku him. Actually, because seppuku is when they kill themselves, that mortal blade saved my ass. Awesome. Insane boss fight. Seriously. Very well done. Very well done. One thing I wish... The arena sometimes is like very difficult to see in it. I get that it looks cool, but it's kind of annoying. This like big grass. And it's actually hilly. So sometimes you cannot even like see her at different elevations. But ah, whatever. So that's Ishin. Ishin beaten. And now we are going to enjoy the final, well, enjoy, that's in quotation marks, because the ending is kind of a downer, spoiler alert, uh, but yeah, let's just have a look at this ending. I think the ending is actually good. I know there is, I think, I think four endings in the game, if I remember correctly. Uh, one of them is the quote-unquote bad ending, which actually is a bad ending this time around. You go full dick mode. I've seen it. I don't know if I'm gonna do it because it's like so... It's like so evil. And then you have the one that's like the classic from Super Convoluted one, which is like impossible to get. I looked at the requirements and I'm like, you have got to be fucking kidding me. I mean, this is a FromSoft game, so we probably had kind of an inclination that the kid was gonna die. What I didn't think was that 
you know, we'd be the one to kill them, kill him. I don't know if he was like mortally wounded or not. Grabs the sword as well, the moron blade. And of course, what goes around comes around. You know, poetic, it rhymes, as George Lucas once said. We now become the new sculptor. Interesting, the one thing I didn't figure out is what the hell happened to the OG sculptor. He kind of just like disappeared. Uh, maybe there is like some side quest attached. Because I know I missed a lot of stuff, especially side quests. But we still kind of have our waifu, so that's good. That meditation lifestyle, you know, that Buddhist lifestyle ain't that bad. So, and this is not the worst ending. Yeah, so again, I know I missed some bosses, uh, some of these like optional enemies, these like Shichiman warrior or whatever they were called. I just couldn't bother figuring them out. Uh, there is some optional bosses in the Fountainhead temple as well that I missed but that was Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. I know this playthrough took longer than expected. Um, I took my time with the game just because with MK with streaming and all that you know I was doing some other stuff as well. However it's finished. This game is a lot of fun. It's a very strange FromSoft game just to give my overall thoughts. Stands apart from the rest of the series for sure. Uh, making for a very, very unique experience, which I really liked because they designed a game that is fun for Souls veterans as well, not just new players, you know. I will say, people have mentioned, we were talking in the stream, that people probably coming into FromSoft games or like Dark Souls series probably shouldn't start with this one because it's so out there, but if you only play this game or if you know... Uh, you're a Souls veteran. Yeah, it's just no reason not to get it. I know people have mixed opinions on this game, people who are fans. Even in the stream, some people have said that they don't enjoy this game that much. I enjoy it. I think the combat system took quite a while for me to click. But once it did, it just felt, feels super satisfying. It always feels like, you know, a sword battle from like a movie or something with like swords clashing and... It's really intense. It's really intense. I think the difficulty is perfect. Uh, the platforming, the movement feels really solid, you know, I'm a really big fan of Dishonored, the Dishonored series, and the movement and all that actually reminded me quite a bit of Dishonored, so overall, not many complaints about this game, it, the performance, I will say, one criticism, it does dip on a standard PS4, especially in like Ashina Castle, and the other thing, I don't know how much replayability this game truly has. I know that uh, you can approach the game in any way you want. You have a lot of different paths. One thing I'm kind of scared of is just because there's no other builds. So every playthrough you're gonna have the exact same tools as any other playthrough. So again, that's one of those things. I am playing the game currently now on my own. Gonna play through it again just to see how I enjoy it. but. I know for a fact that this game is not going to have the same amount of replayability as like a Dark Souls or a Dark Souls 2 does, even Bloodborne which has less uh, replayability than, than those games, this one is going to have even less. However, that is not a negative, that is just an observation. I think this is going to be one of those games like, you know, like Resident Evil 2 for me. That's a linear game, however, sometimes I just go back to it. It's like Cuphead, you know, I've played it a lot of times since it came out even though every playthrough there, there pretty much feels the same as well. I think this game is gonna be like that. I'll come back to it every year or every couple of years. I'm gonna have a great time with it and yeah, that's Sekiro. I think FromSoft could definitely take games in this direction as well. They announced that new game that they're collaborating with, with George R. R. Martin which... well we haven't gotten anything but a cinematic trailer but I'm interested in how the more story-driven 
parts will kind of come into play. Because, you know, George R. R. Martin, he's even more story-driven than even this game, so I'm really interested. However, this game was a good teaser, showing that FromSoft can pull off something else other than the, you know, the, like the really cryptic item description uh, lore type story. So I'm happy about that, and I'm hopeful for the future. I'm still wishing that they, will, they would put out an Armored Core game, a new Armored Core with, like, a couple of Souls mechanics. I think that would work really well, but hey... I'm not sitting there, I'm not the one making the decisions, I don't know how profitable something like that will be. I know this game was pretty like well received, it sold well. So yeah, the good thing, the only thing that it showed, or like the best thing that it showed is that there are other options and other directions to take this series, uh, because with Dark Souls 3, you know, you can kind of tell that FromSoft was running out of ideas and ways to reinvigorate the series, but we now know that there are uh, other directions to take it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. In terms of next playthroughs, I'm still streaming, still putting out uh, MK videos, so we'll see what happens next. I'm gonna probably gonna start streaming some other games as well and also finish my crossbow playthrough. So for now, thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Sekiro. Hope you enjoyed this series. Thanks for all the comments and all that and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.